Black at 650 Gaming here, and welcome to the Desk of Horrors. But not really, this is just my normal desk. I don't have a Desk of Horrors, as far as I know, at least. So, as the title suggests, we're doing something similar to what we did in Short Circuit. Stuffing wires into a bin. No, um, we're going to be making some really simple things. Um, I got the idea to do this from Short Circuit VR. I decided, you know, why don't I do a little video on, like, actual stuff? Because, like, the game is great. It gives you a lot of the basics. But there's some stuff that's a little off about it. So we're going to make some LEDs light up. Actually, just one, really, because it's going to be easier. Actually, you know what we need, though? Resistors. I don't know why it's called a resistor kit. It's just a bunch of different flavors of resistors. Looks kind of like that. But we'll get back to that. Thou. Um, we're going to start off not well, using this. We are, however, going to bump into the wire that the camera's connected to. It might shift a bunch in a second. Hold on. Wait for it. Nailed it. All right. Instead, the microphone probably made a bunch of noise. Um, I instinctively put my hand on my mouth. Let me move the keyboard back a little bit more. Okay. So, we're going to do something very simple with breadboard, wire, battery, and LEDs of some flavor. I don't know. Let's go with one of them. Let's, why don't we use a colored one? These are all completely clear. I'm trying to lift the damn thing up. See, they're clear, but they do actually have colors. And they say right here, you can't really read it. Let's see. They're all, focus. All right, they're all 20 milliamp, which is 0.02 amp. Right? Yes. Wait. Fuck it. I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. I always use 0.02, so it's probably fine. We'll find out in a minute. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these fancy-ass colored LEDs. There we go. Kind of sticks a little. Uh, it's got this whole sheet on top as well, which gives you all the voltages required to run and to not go over. So we've got orange and ultraviolet over here. And the same thing for whatever reason. And I actually have an example have an orange out right here. So this is a little, ignore the poorly painted part, I held it there, um, and also there. This is just a little vacuum tube, as you can see. The one that actually came with my preamp, but I don't use it because it's garbage. And underneath it is a little orange LED. Uh, this was all this box and that little shiny bit there. I was all 3D printed and then painted with model paint. If you look at the bottom, it's not painted at all because there's no point. Um, we got two AA batteries covered in electrical tape to keep it from shorting on anything. The LEDs up here, we've got a button here, the wires there, and only one of those is covered in tape because reasons. So we push the button and it lights up. It looks pretty sweet. It doesn't look that bright or that light orange. It's a much darker orange. It looks pretty cool, in my opinion. That was a cool idea for an extra thing I just had lying around. But anyway, we're going to go with what's an easy one to do. Let's do a green LED. Maybe 15 of them. There we go. Little green LED. So we'll need that. Um, on this sheet, it says, let me see here if I can take it off of this slightly staticky thing. Focus. So green is 2.8 to 3.2 volts. So this is a lithium ion battery out of an old PlayStation 3 controller, actually. And uh, does it doesn't say anywhere, it doesn't say on here, but generally lithium ion batteries like this are 3.7 volts, which means that that's slightly more than the 3.2 that this can handle. Uh, this will actually be fine if we shove it up in there, the long being positive. So it, it glows, it doesn't explode. It will, however, get warm and eventually hot, and then it will die, which is why we need the resistors, which unfortunately is why we need a little math. But before we do that, we're going to do little something here. We're going to take our completely blank wires. Well, okay, we're going to take black wires, shorten them up a little. Really shouldn't do that over the battery. I have all the explodey bits covered with tape, so it's fine. All right, so this one's positive. Shove that up in there. Wait. And then this guy, trim it a little bit. Sweet. Um, I also have these wires. These are breadboard wires or prototype wires, whatever the hell you want to call them. Um, this is not very much wire, but it should be fine. Uh, those are generally used more for this sort of thing. 
trouble for using a breadboard. But they tend to be kind of garbage, so... Yeah. So, let's see. Left guy. Death negative. Well, actually, let's look at the breadboard first. So, they really do look like that. Uh, that's not that white. It's much more yellow than that. Uh, and it's more of an off-white color, but whatever. The white balance might be jank or something. I don't know. It's a little curved slightly, which... Not necessarily normal, but it doesn't affect it. Um, the holes are not nearly as spread apart as they are in short circuit, but, you know, whatever. You still got the negative and the positive rails on the side, which actually come off. Somehow. Oh, no, never mind. I'm thinking it worked differently than it does. Um, and you do have a sticky bottom, if I can get this back together. Here we go. So we got a little peely bit here. That's sticky. But I see no point in taking that off. So, yeah. Um, so we got our negative there and we'll offset it slightly for safety purposes I guess why not eh. kind of messed it up when I uh, cut the wire all right so I'm using solid core wire for this it's just easier to use really just makes stuff like this a lot easier so again we could take our LED and we could put the long leg like I said that one is long the other is short and like I said in the video, let me see if you know, this does have there's a slightly flat side here for the negative that you can't see at all, but it's there. So we put that on there and it glows quite brightly. But we're not going to do that. Well, we just did, but whatever. So we're going to take, let's go with the red wire and see if we can find a black wire for technically proper color coding. Sure. There we go. Shorter one. My box of many things, including some prototyped um, semi-style parking brakes that I don't use because I have an actual one. All right. Positive, negative, great. So, this is where the scary, stupid, horrible math comes in. Let me open up my calculator on my phone. And I talked about this a little bit in the recent short circuit video. So, excusing all of the notifications. Well, oh, shit. What did I do? Oh, no. There we go. The two notifications about bullshit. Um, I talked a little bit about this, uh, the calculating a resistor. So, we know we've got 3.7 volts, and we know it can go up to 3.2. So we're going to do parentheses, 3.7 is what we got. Subtract uh, 3. Point, mm, we'll go 3 volts exactly. Okay, do that. And parentheses, divided by... 0.02, we get 35. That means we need a 35 ohm resistor, however, that, that does not exist. Well, I mean, I'm sure it does, but I don't have one. The closest I have is a 33. I don't remember what it said I needed. We'll just set that there. Was it 37? 35. And I have 33, that's good enough. <laughs> so we'll set that over there. So the other resistors. Well, these are, I don't know, there's, like, multiple flavors. It's like carbon film or something like that. Oh, that might be the other one. Yeah, I'm here. All right. So it's, uh, I don't how many are there? 25. Well, actually, uh, 24, because one of them is missing. But, yeah, we got this whole strip of resistors. They're kind of a pain to take off. Eh. I'll be putting this one back, so I don't want to close up the hole. There's little tiny slots in these very slightly sticky strips that these sit in. There we go. Set that there. Shove that over there. And I actually have a fancy ass tool for this. Let me find it. Should have looked for it first. There it is. Ta-da! Fancy ass tool. Not really necessary, but we're going to use it anyway. I just set that in there and bend it. Normally you figure out the size that you wanted it to be, but eh, whatever. So that's our resistor. I prefer to put the resistor on the positive, but you can go positive or negative, doesn't matter. This is really long. Oh, well. okay. So we'll take our positive, we'll bring it over to there. So now there is positive going into this. It is, however, doing absolutely nothing because there's no negative. So positive, right there. And we take our negative. Now can we take or negative and move it so it can reach and there you go slightly less bright though you can 
not really tell on camera. Let's see. Damn it. Maybe a little bit, but yeah, that's slightly darker. So here's the thing about LEDs. So, like I said, there's a positive and a negative. So like this, it lights up. If I turn it around, however, it does not. It also does not explode. If it were a higher voltage, it would, but it's fine as it is. Let me make sure I'm not lying. Yeah, okay, it doesn't smell like exploded LED, so we're good. Yep. Now the reasoning for that is because LED stands for light emitting diode, and a diode is something that allows current to flow in one direction, but not the other. So there you go, that's, that's, that's short circuit level of circuitry. So we can go ahead and we'll unplug positive, and then the negative will come out. And now you can now set this battery aside. If you do want to do this, I would recommend not using lithium ion because they're kind of scary because they can explode violently with lots of orangey, purpley, pinkish flame. Um, I'm going to shove this over here. I'm actually going to need it later, and I don't need this anymore. So we'll set that aside. We'll set the. Uh, keep that. Set this aside, but away from metal things. Um, sure, you can stay in frame. We got our stuff. I actually still need those wires, whatever. Now we bring in the Arduino. Arduino. Now I pretty much live and breathe these damn things because they're freaking awesome. Um, I have an Arduino in this. This is my homemade stream deck so I can mute and switch things around. Obviously it's not plugged in and has a very short cable. That's whatever. Do I have, I don't think I have anything else around here that has any Arduino so hooked up to it at the moment, but I have a spare. Well, there's now things everywhere, but whatever. Spare micro, or pro micro. These things are much better, honestly. They do a lot more, but they are only solder. Uh, uh, yeah, if that would focus, you could see these are all holes, so you have to solder things to that, and that's too much work. This, however, has these little header things on it, so you can just shove wires into it. So, we're going to use an Arduino. If you don't know, an Arduino is like a very small, very dumb computer. You have to program it and tell it exactly what you want it to do, and what we're going to have it do is very simple. We're going to make it blink an LED on and off. I don't really have any switches around that I can use, otherwise I'd show you how to also wire up a switch. I have a switch, but I'm pretty certain it's broken. It also is... I actually just have wires attached to it, but there you go. I got six feet. Um, but yeah, so you'd have these two connected. So if you have the positive coming in here, and then it comes back out here, and with the switch over here, it's off. Over here, it's on. That's all that really is to that. It's not that interesting, honestly. Uh, we can actually... Uh, we'll leave that there. So we've got our Arduino. Um, these, I want to say, are like 15 bucks. It's an Arduino Uno, or 3 as you can see, from Elegoo. I don't know, you can buy legit Arduino Arduinos. I might be saying that horribly wrong, I don't know, but they're like 50 bucks or some shit. So, <laughs> fuck that. And then these are Pro Micros, and the really nice thing about this, I use one of these, just one of these, in my steering wheel's button panels, which has a key, two buttons on said, or with the key, um, the semi-handbrake pull out push-in thing, and like five or six more buttons and another switch all on that and it doesn't take that much work to get it to work but uh the main thing with these is that they will uh, automatically if you set it up correctly at least it'll show up automatically if you set it up correctly if you tell it to the computer will read it as a joystick this however cannot do that unless you flash special firmware onto it and even then it's kind of bleh so, now we will continue. So we've got our LED, we need some wires. We'll go with longer ones. So we've got, uh, there's three grounds on this. We're gonna go over here. So we got blank, blank, whatever that is, and ground. I usually go blank, blank, you, ground. Um, actually, I didn't need to use longer ones, but whatever. And uh, then why don't we go with pin seven, six. Pin six, I prefer even numbers. 
So we can we can do it this way. That's, that'll suffice. Um, we're gonna take our LED. I don't actually remember what the voltage is that comes out of this. Huh. I assume it's five volts, but it might be less than that. Eh. We'll just assume it's five. So we're gonna try to take the resistor. Here we go. And we're gonna go from positive over to positive. Double check that's correct. Okay, yes. I usually do left as positive, but you never know. And then we're gonna take our wire negative to negative. I also usually go offset slightly. So there's the wiring. Now we can take our big fat USB type B or whatever cable and carefully shove it in there the correct way. This is also a very short wire. So you can see it blinks, but it doesn't do anything. Actually, if I take this and I unplug the ground, I believe we can actually connect ground in 13 and it might do something. Let's try something that might kill it. Alright, well, sometimes there's a way of making that blank. I don't remember what it is. It doesn't really matter. I should not have let that just wander around like that. It did, did, did. Good shit. That'll take us, put that back. That's all there is to the wiring for this part. Do you mind? So, I guess, uh, I'll see you on the computer then. Alright, welcome to the desk. Sort of. Uh, welcome to the Arduino code program thing. So if you get an Arduino, you need this stuff. Uh, this is like the only program that I know of at least that will uh, put code onto an Arduino. So it's very important that you have it. It's free. So yeah. But you start off with this stuff. So you got void setup and void loop. That's all there is at the moment. So I just need to remember how the hell to do this stuff because I don't usually do this to make an LED light up. So, yeah. Um, let's see if we do, I think I might know how to do it. So we're gonna do int const. Or not, we're gonna, ooh, don't do that. We're gonna do const int, constant, but uh, con constant integer. Uh, Let's open up an example of blink without delay. <laughs> I'm not gonna copy it exactly, I just need to remember. Okay, that's how you do it. So it's minimized now. I pram feel. Uh, const int equals, what are we gonna call it? Let's call it green. No. Green. Const int equals green. That's not how that works. No, 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 I haven't fucking. <laughs> I have it backwards. Const int green equals, and then we're gonna put a pin, which is, what do we go with? Seven, six, we're going with six. And six, const int green equals six. So we're gonna then do semicolon. Semicolon is very important. Semicolon means this is it. That is the end of that line. So yeah, need that one after pretty much every line. Not all of them, just pretty much all of them. So const means it's constantly and then int means integer, so it's constantly going to be on six, is my general understanding. So, down in here in void setup, we're gonna do uh, pin mode, so that, that thing I just did, where it's lowercase capital, um, that's called camel case, because it's got a hump in the middle. I don't know why we do that for code, I guess to distinguish between different words in code. You don't use spaces, you do that instead. So then we do semi, or parenthesis genius. Um, green, comma, output, I think. That seems right. Now we're gonna go down to void loop. This is really like the meat of it all, because the stuff outside of setup, that is just a global thing, like, Green is now set as a thing, and it always equals six for every single instance of green. Um, avoid setup. That is also stuff that is run once and kept forever. So, 
green is now set as an output. So it now knows that when you tell it to write something to it, it's not an input and it makes no sense. It's an output and it does make sense. Void loop is where you tell it is going to do this and you better listen. So uh, fairly simple as long as I remember how to do it correctly. Uh, we're going to do, we'll, we'll start off with digital write, write, uh, green, green, comma, low. So you could either do low or high, or instead you could do zero. They equate to the same thing, but we're going to keep it low. At least it should equate to the same thing. So we're then going to do a delay of, let's go with 100. So 100 in this case is 100 milliseconds. So if you needed one second, 1000 milliseconds is one second, or at least close enough to it that it counts. I don't know. So now that I've bashed the enter key on my keyboard because it makes me feel like a man. Not really, I just sort of forgot there was a microphone very, very close to it. Uh, we're gonna do digital right green hi semicolon so there's ways that you could rather than doing digital right green high digital right green low digital right green green high digital right green low constantly you could actually set i think if you just do const this might not be right it might be const uh blink equals something like that. I don't actually know. It might actually, you know what I think it is? I think it'd be void uh, blink. Oh, not blink. Blink is a command. Blonk. Uh, blonk one, maybe two. Uh, do do. Or actually, you'd put a number in that, and then we go like this, and do all that, but we're gonna not do that because that's slightly advanced and also might not be even actually a thing. Doesn't matter. Decay, nope, delay of 100, digital. Well, actually, we could just. Uh, that's actually pretty much it. It would read it, or it would set it to off, then there's a delay, then it's on, there's a delay, then it's off, then there's a delay, then it's on, then it's off, off, on, off, 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 off. So in theory, that's it. So what we're going to do is we're going to verify. And it's going to be like, what the fuck do you want to name it? As long as we ignore a fucking work button, bitch. Um, I was having some issue with the code. Um, or think, actually, you know what? We forgot to do something. So if you make code and you want other people to use it, a very, very important thing. Do slash slash and then type shit and tell people exactly what that does. Because oh, if you have to work with somebody else's code, it's a massive pain. So constant sets uh, green as a global ver global static variable, I think, and sets it. I thought there was a pro oh, fucking moving on. Uh, sets it to pin six on the Arduino. Arduino. There you go. And then right here, slash slash, sets green as an output. Output. And then on here, sets uh, LED to off first. Waits 100 milliseconds, close enough at least. And then sets LED to on, om, um. let's capitalize this one as well for no apparent reason, and then finally waits another 100 milliseconds before restarting the loop. There you go, we got comments on everything so that now we know what shit is. We didn't need to do that because this code is so simple that it's irrelevant, but there's like a bunch of hair on my microphone, just thought I'd share. Um, yeah, so we're gonna click on verify first. This, usually I would do verify to make sure things are working whilst I'm still working on the code. Um, let's call it video blinked the radio star. 
Holy shit, I actually did it right. So if we were to accidentally forget the N on green, or forget an E, so now it's Gren, and we do this. Gren was not declared in the scope. That means that shit doesn't fucking exist. What the hell are you doing? So we had the E back in, and now it's perfectly content. Compiling, done compiling. So now we go to sketch. Tools. We go to tools. Make sure it's set to the correct thing. In this case, since it's an Arduino Uno, we want Arduino slash Genuino Uno. Uh, however, if I'm using a Pro Micro, it's Leonardo. I don't know why, but it is. Then we go to port, and we find which one it is. Not starboard, but port. Nautical jokes. Woohoo. And on this, on this occasion today, this same fucking USB port I use all the time is 10. Sometimes it's 8, other times it's 6. I don't know why. It's remarkably annoying. So we're gonna upload that. In fact, we'll check after I upload it and see if it's still 10. Well, I can tell you it's blinking, but you can't see it. Hey, it's still 10. Let's unplug it. And we'll plug it back in. Is it still 10? Ooh, crafting fucking shish. It's still 10 this time. So we can save. And now it's done. And now I'll see you in the real world. In just a minute. Again. Alright. Welcome back to the real world after that jump cut. Which took literally no time whatsoever for you, but whatever, we're here now and deal with it. So now we've got our coded Arduino and our setup LED with resistor. So we will take our janky ancient wire that nobody really uses anymore except for Arduinos, plug it in, and blink, 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 blink. Now I can go back into the code, and if I wanted to, I could change the delay from 100 to 50. Cut it right in half. If you wanted to, you, you could actually make the computer work slightly and do 100 minus 50 and, you know, give it some math to do or some shit. Upload. Stop blinking. This will blink a bunch. And now it's, you know, stroke giving thingy. Is stroke the right one? I don't know. But then we can set it to 1000 milliseconds. And upload. I'll shield your eyes from that for a second. Now it's on for one or now it's on for one second and off for one second. So we could actually change that so that it's only off for 200 milliseconds. So if we upload that, so we change the first delay to change how long it's off and the second delay to change how long it's on. So it's on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, that sort of thing. Or you could flop the two and it's off for longer than it's on. All sorts of fun stuff. So this is like a... I don't know what it'd be like. One of those blinky lights on top of the radio towers or something. Sure, let's go with that. But you get the general idea. So that's a very, 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 very simple thing. Um, this was much... Whoa, chill. This was much more complicated except for how I didn't do any of the code for it. Fortunately, somebody else had all of the code and it worked right away. Oftentimes, you'll get code that seems like, oh, it'll work fine, and then it doesn't. And that's why you put comments in your code, so people can figure the flying fuck out. But yeah, we can look here. The wiring isn't fantastic, and we've got a bunch of exposed wire, but that's fine because it's all ground. Um, this is one of the Pearl Micros. And, uh, yeah. So things can get a lot more complex. Isn't that fun? So there you go, very basic stuff there. Uh, hopefully this helps some people, and uh, yeah. Like I said, these I think are about 15 buckaroos. I love it when the dog is loud while I'm doing a video, it's my favorite thing. Let's, real quick, Arduino Uno. There we go. Let's see, oh, $12. This very Arduino is $12, $11.86 with prime shipping as well. So yeah, and it comes with a wire too. But yeah, so that's all I got for you today. That's the first little thing of uh, short circuit in real life. Yeah, if you want to see more of this stuff, just let me know. I can do more complex things. I actually do have some buttons lying around that I could do more of that joystick stuff with, although it would be kind of odd to do it that way, but it's fine. We can drop the bass, demonstrate some stuff with buttons and stuff, if you want to see that. 
So let me know if you do want to see more of this stuff in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, go leave a like. If you didn't, don't leave a like. And I'll see you in the next video.